Shelly Luther, everybody. Hero or selfish? This from Business and Politics. Not sure about the website, what they're all about, but it says here, judge says apologize for being selfish or go to jail. Backlash builds as Dallas salon owner is sentenced. Now there's a video that comes along with it. It's about three minutes, so I'm going to play that real quick for those of you who haven't seen it. Spend the next week in jail. Now the judge gave her the option to avoid jail time if she would close her salon and admit she was wrong for defiantly reopening April 24th and remaining open despite a temporary restraining order and other legal action. She refused and also has to pay a $7,000 fine. Fox 4's Allison Harris has the story. Allison. Stephen Heather, more than a million Texans have filed for unemployment. This salon owner fought back, defying state and local orders to reopen. The judge today gave her a way out, but she didn't take it. I'm one of those open Texas moderators. As open Texas protesters stood their ground outside, inside the Dallas courtroom. Counsel, excuse me. The Counsel, the rent is $500 to six months. You will not speak over me. Salon owner Shelley Luther and her attorney Warren Norid stood their ground too, defiant that her salon will not close. Sit down and be quiet. I'm not speaking. Do not say another word while I'm speaking, and you will not interrupt me again in this court. Luther knew that she was risking a possible fine and jail time when she went on camera two weeks ago, proclaiming that her far north Dallas salon off Beltline near North Coit would reopen regardless of the governor's stay-at-home order at the time. Why did you reopen? Because I had no other choice, because I couldn't feed my family. Last week, District Judge Eric Moyer issued a temporary restraining order against her salon. Tuesday, the two were face-to-face, -face, the judge reminding her that she's not the only person nor the only business hurting because of the virus. Your actions were selfish. Putting your own interests ahead of those of the community in which you live. If they disrespected the executive orders of the state, the orders of the county and this city. He gave her a chance to avoid jail time if she apologized and promised to close until salons are allowed to reopen Friday. His offer did not compel her. I have to disagree with you, sir, when, I, when you say that I'm selfish because feeding my kids is not selfish. I have hair stylists that are going hungry because they'd rather feed their kids. So, sir, if you think the law is more important than kids getting fed, then please go ahead with your decision, but I am not going to shut the salon. The judge found Luther and her company, Hot Mess Enterprises, guilty of civil and criminal contempt of court. Luther was taken into custody, sentenced to seven days in jail, one for each day her salon was open after the court ordered her to close, plus $1,000 for each day that it was open, totaling $7,000. She'll continue to be fined $1,000 for each day that it's open until Friday. Back outside, attorney Warren Norred said they will appeal, mocking the judge. If you're not willing to die for your fellow countryman, then it's you that is selfish, as opposed to maybe the... Maybe the vulnerable could just stay inside and order pizza. Or we could bring them things. She was taken into custody today right after Governor Abbott announced that salons can reopen on Friday. She told us today, told the courtroom, that she did get a government loan, but she didn't specify which loan. And as of tonight, there are people on social media organizing rallies to support her. Now, when I had seen this story earlier, I hadn't actually seen the whole clip of that video, so that was my first time watching it. And what I noticed right away was, and perhaps this is standard, but when she was addressing the judge, when she was disagreeing with him, dismissive all the way. When she started talking, he just looked away like she wasn't nothing. And then as she continued looking, he looked like he was looking down. Maybe he was writing something down, taking notes or something like that, but... Totally dismissive. Why not make some eye contact there, Judge? Now, let's get a little bit more context to it, though. I wanted to 
dig a little bit deeper into this because your initial reaction is, oh, you just hear that he's just locking this mother up because she's out there trying to work. Is there more to the story or is it that cut and dry that it's more like a tyrannical power grab type thing? So I always want to look at it and see if there's more before I kind of try to decide and make a decision on how I feel about it. So I've got a couple other sources, but let's scroll through this one real quick here and see what they say. Now here's something I was just scrolling through when I saw this. It says, meanwhile, a GoFundMe page to support Shelley Luther and her unemployed staff has raised more than $314,000 so far. Twitter erupted over the insanity of jailing a mom because she wanted to work so she could feed her children. See how it's kind of framed there? Dan Bongino tweeted, this woman is my new hero. She has a spine of pure titanium. God bless her. One person tweeted, the judge in Dallas is a power-hungry a-hole. The judge said Shelley Luther did not have her rights. The judge who sentenced a Texas mom to jail time for trying to work to feed her family. This is Eric Moy, vile excuse for a man. So you see a couple various tweets there. Here's the part I wanted to touch on in the article, though it says here, Luther is the owner of Salon a la Mode. I thought it was called Hot Mess. <laughs> Shelly opened her hair salon two weeks ago after closing it in March because without it, she has no income. The judge issued a cease and desist order commanding her to close her business. Luther reacted by ripping up the cease and desist order at a protest last week. Hmm. Hmm. All right, we'll see. Because I have, I'm starting to get some thoughts on this here, but Luther said she was exercising proper safety precautions at her shop, including taking customers' temperatures and giving them masks upon entry. She said she can't afford to keep her Dallas hair salon closed indefinitely, and neither can her employees. In court, Judge Moy demanded that Luther do the following, or he'd throw her in jail. Apologize for being selfish for keeping her shop open. Nah, that's not happening. Shut down until Friday, May 8th, which is just a couple days from when I'm recording this, and to pay a fine. Luther responded by saying she's not selfish for wanting to feed her two daughters, so she took the jail time instead of bending the knee to a despot. I have no choice, Luther said in court. I need to feed my family, and my stylists could not feed their families. So my question is this, and this is some pushback against Miss Luther here. They said in the clip that she did take a loan. Now, we don't know what form that came in. There was a couple different small business loans, I believe, that were out there. One of them was the Paycheck Protection Program. And I've heard there's others. I don't know too much about them. I didn't need to research them much because they didn't pertain to my situation at all. But if she has a business, let's just assume she took that forgivable PPP loan. In that case, from my understanding, was that you had until the end of July to start funding your employees once again or bringing your employees back up to speed and getting them back into the workplace in order to qualify to make that loan be forgivable. I certainly don't understand why she would do this because the purpose of that loan is, as I said, you have until the end of July to start going ahead and partaking in getting the employees hired back so that you can get the loan forgiven. So that it seems to be a situation where she should have just waited for Texas to go ahead and issue the order to allow that type of business to open up. Because like I said, it was until the end of July where you could start doing that and start meeting the steps to make it forgivable. So since she didn't do that, it kind of leads me to believe that perhaps she had some different kind of loan where the qualifications for it were a little bit different, but I don't know her situation. So to say that you have no income or to say that your stylists have no income, I don't necessarily believe that to be true. That's just based on what I know. I don't know their situations. I could be totally way off base on this, but all I know is unemployment's giving people $600 extra per week. Now, they work on tips, of course, stylists do, by and large, or in large part. I think they still get paid somewhat well. I don't know for sure. And her as a business owner, she would be eligible for unemployment as well, unless I'm mistaken. 
So you can't tell me that in Dallas that $600 extra per week on top of what you'd already be getting with your unemployment, granted or assuming they've been able to get through and get their unemployment approved, again, that's just, I don't know, so I'm just speculating, but $600 extra per week goes a long way. That's going to get your rent taken care of, your food, and almost every other state in every other city, that's more than enough to get your basic needs taken care of, and that was the purpose of the program. If you live in NYC, San Francisco, LA, <laughs> that's another story. That $2,400 extra per month or $600 per week, you know, obviously going out until the end of July itself is nothing to scoff at. You have these stories where, and I've mentioned this in my videos, you see them talking about, oh, all you get is this measly $1,200 stimulus check and how are you going to make do with it? And these people are just on TV just crying like, oh, the $1,200 is just a drop in your bucket. I don't have no money. I can't feed my family. But it's like the part of the story that's never covered, and I always harp on this, the part of the story that's never covered that I always want to see is, was the person working? Okay. Were they? Yes. Okay. If they're working and they were fired, they're getting an extra $600 a week on top of that money. You're getting an extra $600 a week on top of your unemployment? How can you tell me that the $600 per week isn't enough? Why are you out there in every story trying to dictate the narrative and just act like the administration or whomever, your elected officials, state officials, federal they're only giving you $1,200 to get you through like three, four, five months worth of time. It's totally falsely framing the story. It's not covering the full story. The reporter will never ask them that next question. Are you on unemployment? And if so, how is that unemployment working for you? So the same would apply here in my opinion. What I think, based on what I've read so far, is that she's grandstanding. I think she's full of it. I think she's grandstanding, but I will say this, I'll give her all the credit in the world for being willing to take on that jail term because as much as I would stand for what I believe in, it's kind of hard to do that in the face of jail time. When a judge tells you that you're going to jail, if you don't do this, don't get me wrong, if he tells me to apologize, I'd tell him to go suck a dick. I'd be held in contempt quickly thereafter. He'd bang that gavel right on my forehead, that's for sure, but, you know, you're trying to tell me to apologize? Fuck you, suck a dick. With the prospect of jail time, though, man, I, most people, if you've never been to jail, I haven't, proud to say it, hopefully you haven't either, but when somebody threatens you with some jail time, <laughs> trust me, plain old Joe Blow individuals like us who never cause no trouble, hey, man, <laughs> Most people wouldn't be able to hold up like she did, so I'll definitely give her credit for that. But I do think there's a certain level of BS to her story. My BS meter is kind of like rising when I read some of this stuff, and especially when she's tearing up the cease and desist order. You see her in there posing as she's about to go into the courthouse, staging this thing, like I said, having the media there probably while she's tearing up the order. So... I think she's using it as a way to grandstand, as I said. Now, I'm not saying I have a problem with that, really. But I'm just saying that she's not the victim that she's coming off to be. I don't think that her financial situation is as dire as what she's making it out to be. And she's playing that card in front of the judge with the kids. As a judge, I don't know. I mean, I would, I would ask her myself, hey, are you getting unemployment? Are your stylists getting unemployment? What's this loan all about? You know, I, I would want to know more. But that's just me. I'm always digging. So, but now let's go to this, though. A couple other sources I wanted to show you real quick.